2024 cinematic is here and the visuals are jaw dropping. The music is fantastic and it's just a chilling experience to watch. If you haven't seen it yet, pause this and go and watch it. Now that you've seen it, let's go and break down the differences between the champions that appear in this video and their visual counterparts in game, splash arts, and other forms of media. With Trinomir, we see a few key differences. The first is that his armor is different. The helmet has a different horn shape and doesn't have the studded gems, or at least we can't see them from this angle. Looking at his armor, it looks like he's wearing leather rather than the plate mail that he has in both the concept art in-game and in his splash art. The other difference that I noticed is that his hair is also much shorter. It should be mentioned that this is also not his first cinematic appearance, and although he did appear in A Twist of Fate, it was his Demon Blade skin. Both Kale and Morgana have appeared in a lot of media over the years, including the original League of Legends cinematic. Now, they've changed a lot over the years too, but in their current state, this is what they look like. Now, this cinematic is cool because it shows them fighting Aatrox together. Halfway through the fight, Morgana drops her sword and gives in to her dark powers, which Kale does not seem to approve of. Other than their purple and yellow respective themes, I don't feel like it really screams this is Morgana and Kale though. Neither of them really look like their current splash art or in-game forms. Aatrox is one of those characters that when you translate them into a cinematic, they just they do really well in the transition. The reason why is that humanoid characters like Davy Jones and Golem and Aatrox aren't humans, so you don't have that uncanny valley. He looks amazing and a very good representation of him from both his in-game models and the different depictions that we've seen of him in different forms of media. Now talk about a surprise character here. When he initially picked up the sword, I thought, oh, conical hat, old guy, this has to be Master Yi. But then I saw the wind wall and I was just so pleasantly surprised that this is an older, more mature, probably less salty version of Yasuo. What a fantastic cinematic him just chopping through these guys, but his wind walls on cooldown, and so the arrow swarm comes in and ends his life. The coolest part here is that the white arrow that comes in and ends his life, and the outline of Wolf's eyes in the trees, is a direct reference to the next champion we're gonna be comparing. It should go without saying that Kindred absolutely stole the show. Wolf and Lamb are incredibly interesting characters, being the aspect of death in League of Legends. So that's why when Yasuo died there to that swarm of arrows, it was Kindred's arrow that dealt the killing blow. Of course, Trindamir does not die when he's in his rage mode. You see his eyes are red. He is fighting off death. And this cinematic does justice to Kindred. You can see at the last second when he's about to be struck down, by the two soldiers behind him, and he is saved by Ash, Kindred disappears. What a fantastic moment. And again, Kindred absolutely stole the show. Ash's design here is fantastic. It maintains the hooded archer aesthetic that she has in game and in her splash art, but it ditches the skirt and the uh, sports bra for clothing that would make sense to wear in the winter. She has a fur cape and fur bracers on her arms. Most of her armor is thick padded leather and it is just a fantastic design. It's kind of a mix between her War Mother comic design, uh, but with a little bit more armor padding. A far cry from her original design that you can see in the original League of Legends cinematic and of course her splash art. There is a more cartoony version that you can see in the Legends Never Die cinematic, but overall this is the best version of Ash that we have ever seen in a cinematic. 